friends this is a case of cataract with small pupil i have started the surgery in this case i do not want to use any pupil expansion device because the cataract is soft in this case we have used all kinds of mediatic drops like tropicamide and phenylephrine combination cyclopentolate homotropin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, ocular LS, flour, everything has been used and the people has dilated to this much. So by this time I have made all the incisions. Now underneath an air bubble I'm going to use I'm going to use adrenaline to see if it dilates a little further. The people in this case has dilated say up to four millimeter and with all attempts it didn't dilate further and this is adrenaline. Adrenaline should be injected just underneath the pupillary margin so that it goes posteriorly. Uh, this I learned from our teacher Dr. Arup Chakraborty. Now adrenaline also should be diluted a bit I recommended is 1 is to 10 dilution. I use 50 is to 50 dilution. Now the people has not dilated much with adrenaline. However, with adrenaline and with this uh, viscoelastic substance SPMC, the people has dilated probably a bit more about 4.5 millimeter or so. Now in this case I am going to make a rexis which is larger than the size of the people. This is the advantage of manual rexis and femtorexis uh, cannot be larger than the margin of the, the larger than the size of the people. Here I am going beyond the pupillary margin keeping the flap flipped and I'm going all along and I have made a rexis larger than the size of the people. So, so the rexis size has become adequate. It has become about 4.75 millimeter. Now I'm doing hydrodissection very gently. Little bit of fluid is injected. I am afraid of blowout rupture of the posterior capsule. So I am doing hydrodissection very gently. Now I inject viscoelastic substance. Now in this case my aim is to hold the nucleus at the center. Though the nucleus is soft it is the hardest part of the nucleus is at the center. My aim is to hold it here and then slice the rest of the nucleus with the chopper. Here it is. I hold it here and I slice the nucleus with the chopper like this. And I have become successful in dividing the nucleus into two heminuclei. Now each heminucleus is being pulled at the iris plane and it is being emulsified. Here it is. Here I caught the pupillary margin but I am very cautious I, uh, with my foot pedal and I released it immediately. That's it. So one heminucleus is done and I am trying to hold it here again and slice this part of the nucleus and I have become successful in this. This nucleus has become a brittle one. And so it has helped me in doing it. So if the hardness of the nucleus is up to uh, grade 3, we can manage without using any people expansion device. We can always use a people expansion device, but uh, if we can avoid it, it is better because any kind of people expansion device will cause some amount of sphincter trauma. It cannot be avoided. Any people expansion device will cause some amount of people uh, sphincter trauma.
iris sphincter trauma. So here this is an instrument it looks like an eye. I saw how much cortical matter is there and now I am removing the cortical matter with this instrument Simco cannula. I can judge very well where I am. Uh, my proprioceptive sense is good with this instrument which is not so good with uh, my bimanual in my hands but if one practices with bimanual it's very much possible and now this cortical cleanup is almost done more than 270 degree is done now sub incisional cortex I go through the side port at 8 o'clock and remove this cortical matter and now always in such cases we have to check if I have removed all the cortical matter or not and if I have if there is any nuclear fragment hidden somewhere or not you must always check before conclusion of surgery and at this time also before implanting the intraocular lens. So I take that instrument that looks like an oi to push the iris and I can check it and here I see there's some lens matter is there. It's actually a epinuclear fragment or a nuclear fragment. So this is a very good step all of the viewers please do this whenever you don't use any people expansion device and lot of maneuvers are under uh, without any uh, direct visualization you must always check if any nuclear fragment is remaining somewhere or not now I inject viscoelastic substance again and again check the rest of the area here it is I didn't check this area now I am going through the 8 o'clock and checking the superior part so I have checked 360 degree all the cortical matter has been removed there is no nuclear fragment remaining now I can implant an intraocular lens. In this case, I have selected a hydrophobic multipiece intraocular lens. The incision size has been enlarged a little bit, which has not been shown. It has been edited out. I usually enlarge the main incision by 0.2 millimeter for easy delivery of the intraocular lens. Here it is. This is a multipiece. This is specifically sensor multipiece intraocular lens. I have no financial interest. The company doesn't give me any royalty uh, for using their lenses. So, <laughs> so this is just to let you know what I am using specifically. That's it. The lens has gone into the capsular bag but still I will check it if it is in the capsular bag or not with that Y instrument. Here it is and I find that the haptics have gone into the capsular bag. So in small people we must do several points. Number one, we must try to dilate the pupil. We must use all kinds of drops. And when it doesn't dilate much, we can use some amount of adrenaline, diluted adrenaline. I use Sunway's Epitrate. It is preservative free. It's a very good uh, drug. Sometimes the people dilate so much and they become so comfortable in surgery but in some cases adrenaline will have no effect but still it may dilate little bit more and you can 
do the surgery very nicely. Next is you can do a rexis which is larger than the size of the people. Then try slicing the nucleus if it is soft. Up to grade 3 we can attempt this without using any pupil expansion device because if we use pupil expansion device we cannot avoid sphincter trauma. Some amount of sphincter trauma will occur and then we must check using an instrument why shape it instrument whether any people expansion device is uh, whether any whether any uh, cortex or lens matter is remaining somewhere or not and then we must clean the viscoelastic substance thoroughly and conclude the case thank you very much for your attention